So you know how some people like their hair long and some people like it short and it's just the way that they are? Um, lately, I mean, pretty much throughout her entire life, but particularly lately, at least in the last two years, Ori has been showing me or indicating that she likes her hair short. She doesn't like it long. And she's been indicating this by the way that she allows me to touch her. Both of my lambs are habituated to enjoy touch. Um, but they like to be touched in different ways. Puzzle likes to be tickled and Ori likes back rubs. Um, but when her hair gets this long, and right now it's about two to three, probably about, yeah, about three inches thick, she gets kind of grumpy about being touched because it pulls when she's rubbing up against things. It gets pulled. It's really heavy. It also gets, makes it hard for her to see. She's got that uh, horizontal eye or eye uh, pupil, which means her pupil is flat. Um, at least in the light, bright light. In the dark, it takes on a bit of a different shape. It expands and it kind of looks like a wedge with the larger part, part, like a triangle almost, but it's a rounded triangle with the larger part of it facing her nose. Anyway, because her eye is like that, she is able to see in this kind of a panoramic um, view. And that means she's got less muscles in her eyes to do what we can do with our eyes and moving them because she doesn't need to move them around so much. She can just do a little twitch like that and she'll be able to see a whole view. Uh, that being the case, however, she does have particular um, sharper focus in different portions of her eye. I, uh, I think the broad side has the most focus whenever they seem to try to really concentrate or focus on something. It's with that um, very center part of their eye um, but they do they have demonstrated that they have different focus on different parts of the eye and so when they're like a puzzle for example when she's trying to look into a tiny tiny little hole about this big she'll turn her head to the side and she'll look like directly at it from the center point in her eye in other uh, circumstances I've seen Ori when she's wanting to look at uh, like a little stalk of grass standing straight up, she will look at it with the side of her eye again, and then she'll rotate her head around that. Um, and I'm wondering what part that the, the 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 flat pupil plays in that. But we will probably won't know. We will probably never know exactly what it looks like to look at the a sheep's eyes. <laughs> However, what I can tell is that uh, Ori likes to be able to see all the way around. And so when the wool gets really thick like this, hi Ori, yeah. When the wool gets really thick, it obscures her vision in the back. It grows uh, between her ear and her eye. It gets really thick there. And so when she's looking straight, she's not able to look behind her when that wool is in her face. And the wool also kind of grows up and gets in the eye, like when she's trying to crank her head to turn and look back at the, at whatever she's trying to get a, a view on, that she would, that the, the wool kind of get into her eye. So she doesn't like that. And I can tell that she doesn't like that because when I take out my scissors, <laughs> just these little scissors here, I pull out my scissors to trim her eyes, around her eyes, the wool that grows around her eye she will, uh, she'll let me do it. She'll pause and she'll let me hold her face and then she'll close her eye and I will be able to trim around her face without her fighting against me or anything like that. And then she gets really lovey afterwards. She's really happy about it. And so she lets me stroke her and love on her and stuff like that. Um, another thing is that last year when I sheared her, and I don't know what she's going to do this year, but I have a, I suspect it'll be about the same, is that last year she leaned into uh, my shears. I have like little clippers, the same kind of buzzers really. It's just a larger kind that you know people do their hair with. Do um, They're just a bigger and they're sharper. But I started buzzing her and cutting her wool off and she actually leaned into it 
to have it cut off. And she was very happy and very lovey afterward, uh, for weeks afterward, actually. She really enjoys having her hair cut. So those are little indicators and things that I, I'm looking at to see what her mood is and actually gauge what she thinks about certain circumstances, say like her eyes getting trimmed. Right now she's enjoying her breakfast. And her face is all the way down in the bucket. She gets so aggressive with it. Puzzle's not that way. Anyway, fun stuff. Here is a visual of the sheep's eyes. Um, I drew it myself so I don't have to credit anybody. But this is would be the right eye and this can be the left eye. And you can see when it, the pupil is constricted, when it's in the bright light, how the pupil looks almost completely flat. I say almost because it's not a perfect um, negative sign. Um, you'll kind of see that kind of a shape in there. There's uh, one side is longer than the other side, so it still has that triangle shape. And I drew uh, the right eye having been dilated. So this is kind of what they look like when it gets dark. The pupil becomes really, really big. And they, the effect is really, really cute. They kind of look like they have puppy eyes. But you can see that the shape is not a perfect uh, negative sign. Um, it, it does have that. And this longer part is usually towards their nose. It's the front of, it's the, the forward facing part of the eye. Uh, this would also be the forward facing on the other side. So that would be the right eye, that would be the left eye so that they would, you can see that, that, that that's a little bit different. So when a sheep has, when a sheep has its head uh, up, this is kind of the field of vision that it has. And how far away and how close they can see is dependent upon the individual. We all know that as people, we can, some of us have better vision than others. It's the same way with sheep. Some of us, some of them will have better vision than others, better distant vision versus better close vision. But this is generally uh, their, their area or field of view when their head is up. And their, their eyesight is actually better when their head is down, but we'll get into that in a minute. You notice that behind them, directly behind them, is that blind spot. Now I'm talking about Ori turning her head to look behind her and the wool getting in, uh, in the way. Um, because it usually grows out a good amount around her body so that she can't uh, see exactly behind her. Um, a puzzle, when, when she was a baby, she would do this really funny thing where I would be sitting behind her, like in this area right here, and she'd be completely facing away from me, right? She would have her back towards me, her ears forward, everything indicating that she was completely ignoring me, except for I could see her eye. <laughs> sitting here, I could see her watching me, and that's what she was doing. She was watching me out of the corner, the back of her eye, so out of this back portion of her eye would be where she was watching me. And that back portion of the eye enabled her to see behind me, even though her eyes were not necessarily, she, her head wasn't turned to look at me at all. So that was kind of funny. It was a very shy gesture. Um, that she was doing it that. But when their heads are down, when they're in a grazing posture, let's see, they're kind of like, there's grazing posture. When their heads are down like that, uh, they can have a much better, even they have a much better view around them. And this blind spot almost vanishes because they don't need to turn their crane their necks to look behind them. They just need to rotate their heads a little bit, their faces to in that direction and then they can see exactly what's behind them as well. So that's that's their, their field of vision. Um, I wrote down binocular vision is in the front and monocu monocu monocular vision uh, in the sides because all of the graphs that I was looking at and studying at the time uh, showed that, but I have not been able to find any research about the different fields of a focus that the sheep has and how it uses them. So I haven't found any papers about that yet. Uh, so I noticed that 
when a when the when my sheep needed to say focus on something directly it was typically with this very central part of their eye they have seem to have the most uh detail there um they can read facial expressions out the back of their eyes i was able to like get puzzle puzzle uh wags her tail when i i laugh or when i smile at her so with her completely facing away from me i was able to get her to wag her tail just by smiling at her when i was standing way back here uh, so she can read facial expressions out the back of her eye um and then there are other instances like when there's danger that they look straight at something with that front portion of their eye and when they're looking straight that eye or that pupil doesn't look like a line it looks actually like a square sitting in the front of their eyes um so i'm not exactly sure how much detail they can see from the front uh i don't think it's a whole lot because uh, i have to get pretty close to my lambs before they recognize my face before they if, they, if they don't detect who I am by their hearing, or if I don't call to them, or if they don't uh, detect me in some other way, then um, they don't re necessarily recognize me right off the bat if they're forward facing. If they have their faces turned to the side uh, and they stare at me through that side eye, they recognize me a lot quicker. So that is where they get most of their, their detail from. I'm not sure exactly from the front of their eye. But they can also read their expressions from the back of the eye. So that's all really cool. And last thing I want to show in this particular video is the, the research of cyclovergence. That is um, the work of Marty Banks and William Sprigg. It's hilarious how recently it was discovered that a sheep, uh, when it rotates its head, its eye also rotates just naturally the same way as ours do uh, do i'll demonstrate in a minute but um you, there is a point a cutoff point where the eye stops rotating as well which i have observed i think uh this is as high as uh her head would be before her eye stopped if her head went up higher her eye would follow her up um it wouldn't rotate f further than that but if her head is up you'll see that uh the line it looks straight it, you can't really see that the back of her eye is very uh is much smaller than the front of her eye unless she's her expression has changed and her eye uh, lid is a lot higher up uh, then it comes up so that she can look like all the way around without doing a lot of movement with her head um and when their heads are down i love it when their heads are down uh people aren't able to don't feel like they're, they're being noticed by a sheep when the when the head is down but that's actually not true a sheep does a lot more communicating with other members of the flock it does a lot more observing uh it does a lot more um recognizing a threat or a predator when the head is down and it's really cool because the shape of the eye actually plays a role in that uh, you can recognize or at least i was able to recognize their expressions their facial expressions especially when they were you know giving each other the stink eye or you know trying to make another thought or feeling known to each other that their facial expressions are much more easy to recognize when their heads are down and that has a lot to do with the shape of the eye and how that this little point that that point of the eye and we're talking about the outside of the eye not the eye itself but you can see that that point is not um that point is like level when their eyes are down but it's kind of up diagonal like a triangle when the head is up but yeah that has a lot to do with their facial expressions which is really really cool anyway i just wanted to show you that uh if you want to look up something cool look up cyclovergence there are some other videos that demonstrate exactly what that is about and when it was discovered it's like i said it's, it's still pretty funny how recently that became a scientific term but there you have it so to give you a fair a description or a demonstration of what cyclovergence is uh, from a human perspective it is your eye compensating for the movement or the tilt of your head for example if I were to tilt my head like this my eye actually um, rotates in the opposite direction so it can stay upright you can't tell because my pupil is round but if you were to look in the mirror uh, and you were to target 
a single detail in your iris or the colored part of your eye and then tilt your head, you would notice that that detail doesn't move when you tilt your head until you get to a certain point and then your eye starts tilting as well. Um, at that point, when, you, when your eye starts tilting as well, you'll notice that the world starts looking a little bit wonky and lopsided and that's why the eye has to rotate to compensate so that you can maintain a very good amount of focus um, by taking a different kind of a turn to it. Uh, for what makes sheep eyes different from ours, however, is that we have two eyes and they're rotating in the exact same direction. If I turn my head this way, my eyes are rotating that way just slightly. If I turn my head this way, then again, it rotates the opposite direction just to keep the eye upright. A sheep, however, has its eyes on the side of its head and in order to keep them upright, they actually turn in opposite directions. So you'll have this eye turning in one direction, you'll have that eye turning in a different direction so that the eyes can stay upright and focused. Um, but that was an observation that was made very recently uh, by Dr. Marty Banks and William Sprigg of uh, the UK, UC Berkeley, California. So definitely look them up. Their uh, research is interesting and fun, but it's, it's hilarious that it took people this long for at least scientists, science, I'm sure other people might have noticed, but it, it's taken science this long to uh, notice that sheep's eyes rotate in opposite directions. So fun stuff. Something I will say also though, is if you look up uh, some of Marty and, or some of Banks and Spriggs uh, papers is that uh, they often point out that the horizontal pupil um, is helpful for detecting predators and I believe that it is but one of the things that is never mentioned uh, is that they have that horizontal pupil to interact with their flock in order to see the whole group at once and to be able to interact with a whole lot of them in, in a single moment. Um, that I don't think has been emphasized enough but I'm not sure it has been observed enough either. Um, for example, uh, the sheep are always in a constant eye contact with one another. Um, they coordinate their movement. That's how they coordinate their movement movements. They, they seem like uh, very single-minded creatures, but that's only because they're in constant communication. And the first two years of a sheep's life are dedicated uh, almost exclusively to learning the um, the relationships of each member of the flock, recognizing and memorizing faces and the sounds of each other's voices and even what their, what their toes smell like. Uh, the first two years of their life is completely dedicated to figuring out what those, what, who those members of their, their own flock are to keep them safe and uh, emotionally connected to the rest of the flock. But they are of very different opinions. Sheep uh, tend to be of very different opinions. They tend to have their own likes and dislikes, their own wants. Um, so they have different decisions. They make a lot of different decisions. And in order to coordinate all of their movements together, they have to be able to communicate their thoughts and their wants uh, to each other. Um, and that's their eye helps them do that by being able to be in, in contact. And like I said, when their heads are down, their facial expressions are much more open. They're and readily uh, visible to each other so that they can send those messages to each other and coordinate their movements accordingly. So that's some interesting information as well, which has to do with the, the amazing eye that sheep have.